This is exit planning when you return to that to that thing. So there are some uh, few areas I want you to consider as you are planning your exit out of a toxic relationship. So usually when you return to uh, to uh, to dead things, you return to things that work or you perceived as working or functional when you are unwilling to move beyond a past season. So there is a there's a season for everything. And a lot of times when we keep going back and forth into a rebound relationship or any other type of toxic encounter, we are going back hoping that it worked the way that we thought it was working. We were really under a delusion because if the relationship was truly working, it would still be a relationship today. And that we have to understand that when something has ended, it has ended and that there's no real need and it's no longer productive to go back and restart that relationship. That means that we are unwilling to move beyond a past season because it is past for a reason. That's why you, when you are in a current relationship with a romantic partner, all of a sudden the ex wants to come back to a relationship with your now partner. Well, that's not fair. Before you met the person, they, that person, his ex-partner had all that time to try to get back, to try to make something work. Well, the season has passed. And so it's up to the ex-partner um, to understand that. And it's up to your current partner to make sure that the ex-partner understands that. You return believing a person still needs help. So you are unwilling to believe that the person has moved on. A lot of times we 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 sort of make up something in our minds that um, if the person doesn't have us, uh, if the person doesn't have me, then he will not be able to navigate his own life. That's why we take over their lives, you know, financially, emotionally. We become everything they need when in reality they don't really need us. If a person needs something, they will say that he or she needs something. And um, we are often, we try to go back, we pull at them, we think about them, uh, we think about the contribution that we make. We, we falsely believe that what we did for them uh, is unfinished. But if the person is not contacting you, to have a relationship, it's been finished a long time. Uh, so we are unwilling to believe that the person has moved on. That's really what our problem is. It's not that we wanna bring and give them help anymore. We, we are just shocked that the person has moved on. And that's part of the exit planning process too, where you have to accept that. It's almost like a grieving process where you have to accept that the person no longer wants to be with you or, or uh, that person has to accept that you no longer want to be with them. You return hoping for change, meaning that you are unwilling to address the change you need. So we always project. If we're saying they need to change, it's really us. We are the ones who really need to change. We need to hope for our own change, have the courage to pursue change because we have to accept the fact that the relationship failed, regardless of what type of relationship, whether it was a core relationship, whether it was a hasty construction, a short-term mating strategy or rebound relationship overall, we have to have the courage to address the fact that it actually failed. And so when we go back and try to pull at the other partner, the ex-partner now, we are hoping for uh, some kind of change. Maybe he has changed his mind. Maybe she has changed her mind. But the real change is actually or actually has to come from within. So we need to stop projecting the fact that they need to change or that there's a hope for change and begin addressing our own need to change. You return without loyalty to your purpose, so you're unwilling to sustain what should be a priority. That means that you are a priority. 
For the time you were in that toxic relationship, you made the other person a priority or you made your delusional needs a priority. Whatever it is, whatever those needs were, and you forgot to take care of you. You covered everybody else, but you didn't cover yourself. That's why you are basically suffering some kind of emotional burnout because you are looking at outward for loyalty but you really wasn't loyal to yourself and i'm not saying necessarily be selfish but you do have to put your adult needs ahead of another adult that person is not a person that needs to be um taken care of you have told yourself that that person needs your your money, your care, your emotions, your psychology, your spirituality. You told them, you told yourself that they need that, but it wasn't a priority for them because if it was, I mean, they might have taken something from you. I mean, who's not going to take something that's free? But if it was a true priority and if they benefited from it, then that person would still be in relationship with you. So you are unwilling to sustain what should be a priority, which is yourself and your purpose. You return to clean up their mess. So when you're unwilling to let people be responsible for themselves, that person, every everyone that you come in contact who is a non-child, kid, non-adolescent, that person, um, anybody other than that, that person is an adult. And that person is responsible for cleaning up their messes. And that's why you have to be careful about when you begin to open up your pocketbook. Because as soon as you open up your pocketbook, you are you are now creating a habit. It's not a habit yet, but he's going to come back again and hint around and ask for help. Uh, he's not going to really ask for help because real men usually don't ask for help. They will find a way to get it done. It's the weaker men who knows that you will open your pocketbook to give it to them. So now you're trying to, you are returning to dead things to clean up their mess. And you are basically suggesting to the person that you don't have to be responsible for your own life. I will take on that responsibility. I will wear all of your baggage on my back while at the same time wearing my baggage on my back. That's not right. That's coddling, that's emotional, financial, psychological coddling. And that person will never get him or herself uh, together as long as you are there to clean up their mess. You return to give them a chance. So when you're unwilling to give yourself a chance, the only person in the situation right now who has just gotten out of an, an abusive, toxic, rebound relationship or any type of relationship where the partner was cheating, you are the only one who needs a chance. You need to give yourself a chance. And what I mean by this, sometimes we don't always get what we need in childhood. We are often wounded in childhood. And so sometimes you may have to reparent yourself and give, you, give yourself a chance. Make yourself a, a child in a sense while you're still an adult and, and say to yourself, I'm going to give you every opportunity to win. And as long as you continue to hand, uh, hold out your arm to try to pull back that ex-partner, you're not giving yourself a chance because eventually he's going to leave for good. That's what happens because if he doesn't feel like he wants to stay or, or I say it like this, if you feel like you got to still extend that arm to pull him back or try to grasp at him like you are grasping at the wind that lets you know he doesn't care about any chance you're trying to give him he doesn't see it as a chance he sees it as a burden you return to create a distraction so you are unwilling to address your broken focus so uh you were going down some kind of path before you met him that's always always the case you were going you were maybe in school you were working full time, working to pay off your debt, working on um, you know family relationships or something like that. And then you pulled at a distraction. That's what happens. And it can be an ex. It can be another person who looks like the ex emotionally. 
And so now you have put something in your path to distract you. And usually when you do that, it is because you're winning or you are on your way or you're processing or you you realize that it's going to take some time to make your dream happen or something like that. And in some ways, you are kind of offended at the idea that it's going to take time. So to make you feel happy in the moment, you pull at a a distraction. That distraction could be sex. It could be with friends, going to the club every weekend. Um, it can be a number of things. But all that's going to lead to is broken focus. And you're going to wake up two to five years later realizing that you didn't accomplish the thing you you started out to do. So when you return to dead things, it is a way for you to create a distraction which will lead to broken focus. You return to ignore your pain so you are unwilling to resolve your crutches. So the fact that you are pulling at that person is a crutch. It's always a crutch. So then what does that crutch look like? Who does that crutch really, who is that crutch? Because the person just has a, has a phase, but they have the same emotions of a person you have dealt with in your past. And a lot of times we pull at people that we already know. So in my situation, I kept pulling at toxic people that hurt me and used me as a rebound. I didn't know it at the time. And it led to people pleasing. Well, through self-reflection and journaling and writing my books and everything, I realized that the relationship that I had with with um, a man or or even a female friendship was the same relationship that I had with my mother. That my mother was the one who treated me like a rebound, who treated me like I didn't, uh, like um, I was a problem. And the pain from that, I never addressed. I didn't even know I needed to address it. It wasn't until the last relationship that I had that really devastated now, I'm not going to say devastated me, but really shook me at my core, meaning that I didn't realize just how much danger I was in. That's when my eyes began to open. That's when I began uh, journaling and writing. And, uh, and I realized that I was pulling at a crutch, pulling at the same type of person who had hurt me in childhood um, in adulthood. You return to your own deadness, so you are unwilling to let yourself live. So the more you continue to engage in different types of distractions, uh, toxic, uh, you know, toxic relationships and encounters, you are not really letting your own self live. That that is something that you have a problem with. That you you don't think you deserve to be alive somehow. Because why would you continue to uh, uh, compound your pain by pulling by putting more baggage on top of you to uh, to hold to bear right? You know, for for instance, if you um, if the partner you would win already gave you two kids, why are you trying to get a third kid with that same person? You know, you're trying to make something out of something when it's really nothing. The kids are important. I'm not saying that the kids are nothing, but the relationship with that ex-partner is nothing. It's really deadness. And the more you keep pulling at him to try to be responsible as an adult, responsible as a father, responsible as a potential mate, the less you are allowing your own self to live. Hopefully you were able to gain some insight from, from this brief lecture so like the video please subscribe to the channel you can visit my website send me an email i will respond uh references to the books will be available uh spring 2021 thank you for visiting the channel